There is this long-running joke about Rust developers that they feel the need to rewrite every bit of software they see into Rust for better memory safety, better concurrency, and all manner of other benefits that may or may not be applicable to the project at hand. And for the sake of a bit, let's just assume the meme is entirely true. To make it viable, you need Rust to be running on pretty much every system out there, even systems where it probably doesn't make that much sense. For example, got Rustlang running on macOS 9. This is macOS 9.2 with Rust functioning. This might seem like a really dumb toy project that nobody would really care about, and Maybe you're onto something, but that's exactly what I like to look at on this channel. So this was done through a project made by this developer called W2C2. This translates WebAssembly modules into C. This is inspired by another project called wasm to c basically doing mostly the same thing. But in the case of this newer project by TurboLent, this isn't just supporting any random version of C. This is written in C89 and generates C89. Now, you may have never heard of C89 because most people don't refer to it as C89. They usually call it ANSI C. If a system supports C, at a bare minimum, it's probably going to support ANSI C. This is not long after C was first being standardized. And the reason for ANSI C is supporting random systems that nobody in their right mind still uses, like Mac OS X on PowerPC, Haiku, Rhapsody, OpenStep, Windows XP, a bunch of other random things that support ANSI C. Even though all of that stuff is cool, this is converting WebAssembly into C, not Rust into C, so where does the Rust come into it? Well, we need a brief explainer on what WebAssembly actually is. So WebAssembly, as the name would suggest, is basically like assembly for the web. JavaScript is a really high level and really complex, not complex for the user to write, but complex language in what it does behind the scenes. Let's say you want to go and create a HTML element. This isn't just a single operation being done. There is maybe like a hundred or a thousand little individual operations that need to be done in the background to make that occur. Whereas assembly, or in this case, web assembly, breaks everything down into these single or very small sets of operations that can be executed in a much faster way. And because you have access to all of these individual operations that make up these much larger operations, it makes it much easier to optimize. But WebAssembly, also commonly just called WASM, generally isn't written by hand. Like regular assembly, you can absolutely go and do so, it's just not an effective use of your time. Usually what WASM is used for is as a compilation target, using general desktop languages like C, C++, and Rust, allowing you to use these languages in a web context, offering you very close to native desktop speeds, obviously not exactly the same, but for many instances, considerably faster than JavaScript. And in case you forgot, Rust is used to bootstrap itself. Rust is written in Rust. So if you convert that into WebAssembly, basically all you're doing is adding an extra step into the chain. Rather than using WebAssembly as your final target, now you use it as sort of a intermediary language to convert out to something else. In this case, C89. Is this going to be a perfect system? Probably not. Is this going to be as quick as converting from Rust directly into C89? Probably not. But by having WebAssembly there as this common intermediary language, it makes it very, very easy to do these conversions into random other things that 
wouldn't have actually been possible or doable in a reasonable way. If you want to convert, say, I don't know, some random language into C, now you need a converter directly to that language. Instead, by having WebAssembly there, everything can just go to WebAssembly, and then you can make use of anything that goes from WebAssembly into something else. Now, tools like this don't make what I'm about to say possible, but they do work as a step along the way. A step along the way to the mystical and elusive universal binary. So, this is a concept that I hadn't really heard of until I started looking into this. The idea is that the way we traditionally build software is we have our source code and then make the macOS build, the Linux build, the Windows build, maybe an OpenBSD build, or any other build we want to have. And then that can be shipped out to the users of that system. But this isn't really a convenient system to have for developers. What would be amazing is going from the source code into a single build that works on every single system. Now, the idea of a universal binary, it doesn't necessarily have to be a binary. This is just a convenient term that developers generally understand. The important thing is it's completely portable and works on every system. And the interesting thing about this is we're kind of going in that direction. You may not like the way it's going in that direction, but if you want to have a desktop application, Electron basically aims to do this. You design it around Electron, and then Electron pretty much works on any system you want to be using. But Electron is far from perfect, and some features will need to be changed specifically for a certain operating system. You need to optimize things for different OSs, things like that. You have things like Discord on Linux, where a bunch of features are just missing. Let alone Discord on Wayland, where... Well, it's even worse. But if you just don't care about the desktop altogether, you can get something that literally already does this. Designing it as a web application, running it only in the browser, like Google Docs, the web version of the Microsoft Office Suite, and a bunch of other software. This is effectively a universal binary. Obviously, WASM and these WASM conversion chains by themselves don't exactly fix the problem. It's not going to make, you know, a Linux toolkit work on Windows. It's not going to make a macOS library work on Linux. That's just not how that's going to go down. Whether a true universal binary, a universal build system is really possible one day is still a mystery for future developers and future generations to really explore. But with experiments like this, it demonstrates that it's at least possible in these simple cases like getting a compiler working, like maybe getting a simple terminal application working, but full-blown GUIs, that's a long way away, and I don't see anyone seriously exploring it, at least right now. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Do you think Rust on macOS 9 is a really stupid idea? Do you love it? Do you have no idea why anybody cares about Rust? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and the pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.